Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, welcome back again. And today is uh, about how technology is helping schools in learning and management. How technology is helping schools in learning and management. And uh, by the way, I will say this 101 times, right? I will not tire up in repeating this that the things we are appreciating in uh, this technology issue are the small things that you may not think about. They are the small ignorable things that you might not uh, like put into consideration sometime. And one of the things, smallest things that we are appreciating here about technology is just uh, through the use of dust-free whiteboards. I have been a teacher, my friends, and you have been a teacher, maybe, all right? I've been a teacher even in big institutions, small and big institutions, okay? And I have seen it myself. So I'm talking sometimes from some experience that using uh, the, 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 the normal blackboard that uses chalk, chalk, it is a stress. It, 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 it produces a lot of dust that will uh, make you dirty. Number two, it is not healthy because that dust can cause a lot of other, you know, health problems. It has health problems, dust from the chalk, right? And for, it, it is from this experience that I do personally appreciate the dust-free whiteboards. A kind of an electronic board that you can write on using mark pens and you just move an electronic or even a manual duster and wipe it out. And so this is something personally I appreciate. This is something that those who have been in the teaching fraternity do appreciate a lot. For those who have had an experience of using the normal blackboard with the chalks compared to now dustless, you know, whiteboards that are used nowadays. This is a milestone that has been brought about by technology, that has been brought about by people learning new ways of doing things, brought about by technology. Another thing is through, uh, that we appreciate in technology in schools and learning institutions is through the computer applications that are used for data analysis and storage and also in illustrations. In learning, there is a lot of data. Data is the unprocessed information. Data is that information that has not been worked on. It is that which has not been communicated in or explained. And so, computers have helped a lot through applications in analyzing this data, in you know, explaining this data, and putting it in the format that can be understood, that can be explained. It has also helped in the storage of the data so that you can now find students or pupils going to school without carrying the normal bags and, you know, a luggage of books because they are using electronic gadgets go, to go and study. All the data is stored in the small electronic devices or gadgets that they are carrying, like, for example, laptops in their tablets, in their computers, or it is at school, stored in servers, and maybe on desktop computers. And this is something we are appreciating a lot. That storage of data has been minimized, so that we don't have to always carry a luggage of books at our bikes going to school. Illustrations. I've been into an art school, in an art, you know, institution, and I know what illustrations is about. I know how people will need to illustrate, you know, the, uh, you know, their drawings, for example, the data that they are, uh, you know, or their expressions, so that they have to draw, they have to sketch out, and you know, wh when you write that sketch out, okay, let me use myself as an example, that in this big institution, or in this big institution where I was, it is an art school, by the way where we used to nurture, you know, talent from students. And now, uh, you know, the students could be, for example, for those, those for graphic design, 
multimedia crafts, interior design, fashion and design, you know, pattern drafting, or um, was it pattern, clothing and technology. And so these students will go into normal lecture halls. And then in those normal lecture halls, they will be given their lectures. And then the illustrations or the drawings that they are illustrating what they are supposed to do. And so from that, they will be asked to sketch out in their books or in their sketchbooks. And then, because personally, I was in the computer department or the IT department, they will come to the computer labs for illustrations, or rather, for computer applications which are used for illustrations. So that from the sketches that they, they have, they can develop it into meaningful illustrations using computers, right? And so, when I talk of illustrations, I am bringing out that idea of doing what you have, doing the idea that you are having, putting it in a computer and illustrating it, because it makes it easy for you to illustrate when you use a computer. Uh -huh. Imagine of this, okay, fine, I'm also a student, that student who did GCRE, you know, art and craft those days, if you know, you know. So, you can imagine how teachers used to struggle when they have a drawing that they have to illustrate for us, or that they have to show to us, and then they would go and draw, you know, make a drawing on the wall, then they will use different, you know, chalks to try and paint it out, different chalk, you know, colors to try and paint out, so that they bring out that illustration to the students, so that they can make the students understand the illustration that they are trying to bring out and the colors that it has. Nowadays, you just need to sketch out and you can use pick and place color from the computer. You just pick and place color, pick and drop the color, or you use illustration programs to draw and then, you know, put color on it, those illustrations. And this is what I am trying to talk about moving from that traditional or manual way of coming up with the drawing and then you have to paint it out using different chalk color to bring out that idea that you are having okay and then another thing that we are appreciating about technology in learning institutions that has helped people students and teachers in teaching or in training is through e-learning and research e-learning is online learning it is using the electronic devices to learn, in which you can use, make use of internet to learn online. And then you can do your questions online and submit it to the teacher. Research through Google, through chat GPTs, through artificial intelligence. You, you know, do research. You find out information about that which you are trying to express. And then you can get it from the computer. Put it down or type it or do your drawings and illustrations, calculations, and then submit it. That online learning is what we are appreciating in this. Uh, and also through downloadable applications and blogs, okay? Nowadays, even in our mobile phones, you just need to identify the application that you want to use. For example, it is Google Maps. For example, it is about, you know, um, uh, 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 you want to know who calls you, what do you call this application, Trucola. For example, it is WhatsApp, for example, it is Facebook. You just need to write that application from uh, 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 your, uh, your apps, okay? And then you download it from your, uh, your, your uh, applications in the mobile phone. And then you download it and start making use of it. So those are downloadable applications. And this is the same when we talk of computers. Actually, you know, a mobile phone is basically a small computer that you are carrying with yourself, okay? And so those downloadable applications are the blogs. Blogs are those write-ups which you can maybe open up when you are online and then you read information from there. Or what we are doing, making a, a, a video, or rather a video, uh, um, recording so that we put it online so that this information can be available online it is a blog it is a video blog it's a vlog that can be watched online and then when we talk of downloadable applications it's those applications which you can download for example even from your phone and make use of them then we have to appreciate that there are video conferencing there is video conferencing 
there is Google Meets, there is Zoom, which has come about with the technology. And it is helping a lot that people are able to do meetings. One is abroad, another one is here. Someone is in America, someone is in Britain, someone is in Ethiopia, someone is in Uganda, you know, someone is in Somalia, someone is in Tanzania. But they can be able to come together and meet through Zoom, through video conferencing, through Google Meet, and they discuss their ideas or the agenda that they have online. And they agree, you know, it's like just a live meeting that cuts down the cost of traveling, that cuts down the cost of people being in other areas that they are doing uh, some other things from there. But they can do whatever that they want to do, like if they are doing it live in a live meeting or in a normal traditional meeting. We have also information management software. My people, you may not appreciate this. If you've never been in, a, in an institution, for example, for example, a private school, without an information uh, management software, a software that is used to manage the data in that institution. You know, institutions, I said, it is about data. It's about information. It's about keeping the records together. And for those institutions which you do not have a management software, those institutions which you do not have a, have a database software, they are doing it manually. I can tell you they are losing a lot. I can tell you they make a lot of losses to some extent. Because manual way of putting data, it's very costly. It has a lot of area errors. But now, if you have used a database management system in your institution, you can agree with me that it makes things very easy. This data is always available because you can even store it online. You can keep it in your emails. You can keep it in cloud computing. You can keep it in your electronic devices that you can keep elsewhere. For example, uh, if you, uh, you put it in an external hard disk or so and keep it elsewhere. So that just in case of theft, in case of fire, in case of, you know, mishandling, you can have a backups elsewhere. But for those which are putting it manually in a room like this one, then you get an accident, they can tell you the loss in that. They can tell you the loss they incur to pay people to come and write up this data again. These manual files, they also get torn. They get old. Zina raruka raruka. And when they raruka, you end up losing that data. You end up having nowhere to, uh, you know, retrieve that data, uh, leading to loss of information. Uh, Technology has come about with, with accounting simplified software. Accounting. For every institution, be it a school, hospital, church, you know, even in families, you need an accounting software so that the record about your data, the record about your finances is somewhere kept for your reference, you know, for your knowledge on what is happening, on when you are making losses, on when you are making, you know, profits, on when you are overspending, or on when you are at your, at par, or you are moderately spending what you have, and spending it wisely, okay? So those, these accounting, simplified accounting softwares are helping a lot in schools. For example, Excel, Microsoft Excel, Sage, you know, QuickBooks, they are helping a lot. Or databases which have been made with an application or with somewhere where you can do your calculations. It is helping a lot in running institutions. And institutions examples are like schools, like hospitals, like colleges, like families. Families are an institution, a church is an institution. Very important to keep your records or to keep your data somewhere where you can locate it when you need it, okay? Another thing is about database systems. Database systems, which I've just discussed, for information storage to, to minimize space usage. That with technology, you just need a very small space to store your data. You can carry even your data on a simple tablet, on a simple, you know, laptop or in your desktop. Very small. That is portable and you have all your information there. You can put it in the, in the cloud computing and you are safe at any other time, okay? Um... Traditional, you know, way of filing is very expensive. You need shelves to keep your files, which can catch fire anytime, or which can get stolen, or zikuliwe na panya, ama ziyaze kuraruka juu kuzeka, and this leads to loss of information. Then we have download, downloadable audios and podcasts 
for meetings. Audios. An audio file is a file in which sound has been used. Unaongea tu. You just talk and record what you are saying. And then you can, you know, you can uh, uh, send it to people whom you want to, them to hear what you want heard or the information that you want them to hear about your meeting or about what you want done. Podcasts are also recordable or some recorded, you know, audios that you can download and listen at your own time. And this has helped a lot in managing institutions, in managing schools, in managing institutions, and also in teaching. Mwalimu anakuja class or a teacher can come in class, you just talk or you just record yourself teaching or doing a lecture and then you send it to your students. Okay? You send it to the student email accounts or WhatsApp accounts so that they can listen to your class and understand the topic that you are teaching. And this is helping a lot in schools. This is helping a lot in uh, teachers to be able to teach. College students to be able to study, to listen to their lectures or to even study online when they cannot be able to come to class because of other commitments. Maybe they are employed, they are employed or working students, but they would want to have a class. So this one is helping students and schools a lot and teachers in doing their lectures or expressing their lectures to their students. Okay. Then we have also some real-time examinations and results. Okay, I must always use my example whenever it is available. And I must say that I appreciated a lot when I was doing my short courses. Okay, my short courses, except, uh, especially computer aided design. Computer aided design. I was doing it almost online. That's okay, fine. I used to, under, to, to, to attend classes. But when it came to exams, we would be sent exams. And we do it online, okay? And you do the exam online, and before, okay, and submit it online. Before you wake up and go home, you have your results. Whether you failed or you passed, you get your exam, you, you, get, you get your results. That one I've done several times. When I was doing computer-aided design, when I was doing my CCNA for networking, CCNA, uh, yeah, accounting, networking, that one I did a lot. I even received a letter, congratulatory letter for passing from the CEO, uh, John Chempers. John Chempers. I have a letter, a very big letter, or rather a very smart letter from John Chempers. Uh, I think he's the CEO of um, uh, the CCNA networking course. I, I got that at stage two. And I'm, I got, uh, or rather I'm very proud to have it because it has helped me a lot. Those are things I did. The letter I was sent online, the examinations I did them online and submitted and I got my results like immediately online. Okay. Um, I also got another one I think for computer aided design when I was doing ArchCAD, you know, application and I also got a letter from there. I don't know whether from the same John Chambers, John Chambers or the name of the guy, but I also have the letter with me. Maybe I'll come along with it some other time when I will be doing another video blog on technology like this one and testify or show it here uh, for you or to you, my followers, my subscribers. And also we have availability of artificial intelligence that can analyze data and do illustrations. My friend, chat GPT, chat GPTs. Okay, I'm telling you people, fine. There is scarcity of uh, jobs. But I can tell you with artificial intelligence, if you know how to use it, if you know how to work around with chat GPTs, my friend, you are miles away. With the chat GPTs, with the artificial intelligence, you can do an exam very hard exam, ile ujaifanya and pass it. Because with the chat GPTs, you just need to feed it with the data. And it brings you all the information. Just like you've asked it. It analyzes all the data. Okay? I know there, are scarcity, there is scarcity of data. I don't know what to say, how to express this. I'm telling you guys, 
embrace technology register yourself into the smallest computer you know college that you have uh, in your vicinity or that you have available because with the knowledge of computing with just basic knowledge of computing you can do a lot you can advance actually with using this because internet now is available with using artificial intelligence you can know almost everything that you want you can do illustrations there is a lady i'm following on social media especially on facebook she's elon she's elon somebody she's signing her work with property for elon i don't know elon who she's doing very smart illustration and i know i'm sure because i know that she's using artificial intelligence to do to to to, to come up to come up with those illustrations right she's using chat gpts using artificial intelligence you can learn a lot of things you can learn even now uh, this uh, uh, forex and understand it and with the forex for those who are doing forex my friend they are making money and real money okay don't come for me to ask me whether i am uh, getting the same amounts of money i mean a different <laughs> I'm, I'm doing some different things maybe like for example I'm doing some digital content creation that's part of technology right which students the smallest the youngest of a student can do okay and so what I'm trying to say I'm trying to show the importance of technology and that with artificial intelligence you can do a lot there are jobs my friend Kazi Iko right maybe you are old to embrace technology or to get into these things but your young your young daughter your young son your small sister your small brother is not old enough for this and with the technology i don't think there is an age limit if anything so if you embrace the technology you will see these things you will get what i'm saying for those who have done forex you know how much you are making in a good day as well how much you are losing on a bad day because it happens in business you prepare for losses as well as profits and you embrace it you can do better every other day and you can fail any other day it is about how you use the information and so what, so what i'm trying to say is that with artificial intelligence with things embracing things like for example learning um forex with learning even the basic of the computer applications you can even get to know how to edit your videos and put them online you can be able to know how to go about tiktok if you don't know although i know it is very simple because we are doing it from our phones and so you can know get to know how to go about your tiktok how to make good use of your facebook how to make good use of your instagram instead of misusing it and make a lot of money and make a lot of progress and get to learn a lot because it's not all about money it can also be about how to know to know how to live to know how to survive to know how to get better with what you are doing to know how to be at par with the other people and this is help being aided a lot by technology technology is taking its place so well in this and so schools are benefiting a lot in this in terms of teaching in terms of management in terms of you know making use of space the available small space and they survive with that a, a lot they thrive actually not even strive uh, surviving it's thriving it is thriving they are succeeding from that because with the technology many things are possible because there are ways of doing it better than the traditional way in which we require a lot of material a lot of space to be able to carry out this even in employ you, you 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 don't have to employ a lot of you know workforce if you employ technology you need very small or very few workforce because you can automate so many other things you can automate your classes you can auto automate your accounting department to some extent so that you instead of needing five accountants you just need two instead of needing or requiring five uh, you know 
receptionist, you just need one. You just need one administrator. You just need one, you know, administrator for your network and for your databases. And things are running. You automate some of some or a lot of other processes so that it can be done by technology instead of employing people to do it. And this saves a lot in terms of money, in terms of time, in terms of, you know, labor. And this is what we are appreciating. This is what we are saying. Thank you. Hindi yo sababu tunasema asante. Hindi yo maneno kidogo yende tunashukuru when we come to technology. Because it is also creating a lot of jobs. Remote jobs. You can sell from your accounts, from your Instagram, from your Facebook, from other applications like Gigi and Pigiami. From your emails, you can sell or you make a digital shop, just like we illustrated, just like, like we discussed in our previous classes. And so this is helping a lot in schools, in teaching, in learning, in research. And that's why we are saying thank you, asante kwa hii, jabo kidogo. Please subscribe to our channel, like our videos, and share to other social media platforms. And we shall appreciate. Shalom.